Like, it could be a thing. Like, Sarkin is broke. Both of them. Both of them are ridiculously good. Looks like he's activating Perilous Wall here. Is it at his instep? Or his main phase, maybe? I think it's his main phase, which is... Bizarre. Yeah. He's he, doesn't like want Kira, or he doesn't want Kira to ultimate. Uh, he, okay. Kira was at Might five. as well do it in your turn than the upkeep. He's not going to flash in a boon satyr in his upkeep, so... That ornithopter, though. <laughs> ornithopter will convoke an artifact out if it really wants. Or does Chief Engineer say blue creatures? You, I know Grand Architect says only blue creatures can do that ability. I don't know how Chief Engineer reads. I think it's artifact. I think it's artifacts you play gain convoke. convoke? Something along that. Those that lines. makes sense. Because you can tap any creature for it, so he can tap himself. I'm pretty sure. Of course, if you Google search the word Chief Engineer. You will not find a magic card first. You will find a bunch of chief engineers. Artifacts you spell... <laughs> Artifact spells you cast have Convoke. It's a 1-3 for 1 and a blue. It's not a wizard. It's an artificer, of course. Are we going to Waffle House later? Is that, is that what's going on? Uh, you can go ahead and send William Caudle over here for one minute. But he has to watch his language because I know Caudle... And he just cannot just be absolutely crazy, because uh, that's not good for anyone. But if if this is a possible Waffle House trip later, I am not sure if I would go. I do have dinner. I do have dinner out. currently cooking in the crock pot. Crock pot? When you're an adult, great investment. Great investment. Love All the crock pot. Crock pot amazing. Mm-hmm. Crock pot gains are the best gains. I might go to Waffle House if a bunch of people go to Waffle House. Let's say that. I'm talking like eight people. It, sure, I'll go. If we it can, does have if, to be 3 a.m. though. No. I don't want to go to 3 a.m. Waffle House. That's after all of the bars let out. And who wants to be around those kind of people? Everybody. Like really, really hardcore drunk people at Waffle House. While you're just trying to be a nerd eating Waffle House. It's a uh, Casey Meyer. plays a Bloodstain Meyer. He's just playing Fetch he Lands. In he deck. can't play Scalding Torn. I, actually, I do think Casey put Treasure Cruise in. That was one of the last cards he put in. It was around the time we like brewed that blue red burn deck for uh, Memphis. Actually, it was oh, around that same that time. Yeah, that was a fun deck. A second cure coming down, so he had pairs of both of the planeswalkers. Casey just wiped away, and quickly Casey's seeming lead is just non-existent. Yeah. Uh, there's a with you know. that cure. He plus chief engineer, uh, which is. Pretty much the obvious play, but really you're not playing around Insult Artifact in that case because Insult Artifact on the Ornithopter will kill one or probably both. Potentially both because you hit Kiora first. Xenoghost is open. I assume he doesn't play many flyers. Yeah, I. Tamra doesn't really have that many flyers in general. I mean, if he's playing the dragons. They have the dragons in red and like Reachers in green. And like some blue cards could fly, but I don't think any he's playing. Savage Knuckleblade gains uh, haste, right? It doesn't gain flying ever? No. Okay, I was pretty sure. So red for haste, two and a green, plus two, plus two, two and a blue, bounce it. So. Casey cracks the Bloodstain Mire, going down to 17. It seems no. like Ken is starting to take control of this game. Weird, when he's cracking this. That was your nine stuff. So. He should be at 16. He took. Yeah. Oh, he blocked with Ornithopter on the okay. Goblin. We're good. Yeah. No. He was already at 17. We're fine. I'm just crazy. Every now and then I say something too silly. Uh, the life total is really... Casey's doesn't really matter at the moment. I agree. This Rattle Master is going to put a lot of pressure on him, but if Ken continues to plus his Kiora and target his uh, opponent's creatures before attacking, it's going to be a free chump on Rattle Master. He lightning strikes the Goblin Rabble Master here. It's understandable, but it's really rough to do that while you can just kill Kiora. Yeah. But I, you're going to lose if you don't handle either one, but him having both, I think it's really, really difficult. And Ken unbelievably, unbelievably stabilized through a perilous vault by slamming both planeswalkers that got vaulted away. So that's some uh, some good magic right there. So it looks like Ken finally cracked the Evolving Wilds. <laughs> the one that's been sitting in place since like turn 5. Hey, if he didn't have other lands, you might not crack it. It's an Evolving Wilds. You need it to come into play untapped. 
Or if he was willing to draw a quarter, but his life total is not. It's not low enough for that to exactly matter. Because an evolving wild will gain you a life. You don't have to pay a life to crack it like the other fetch lands. That that's also true. Oh, I guess if you would have. Oh wait, never mind. I was just thinking of the evolving wilds as a real fetch land. It was like if he would have cracked it, he might have lost. You know, ten was something Casey could do. He's going to take uh, two here, putting the Engineer on a Seder and, of course, the Ornithopter on the Goblin. There are Goblins a in that stack. second Goblin Rabble Master. Oh, yeah, there are. They're in... Oh, if for reference, I don't know if you realize, they're in color order, alphabetical order. So it goes white alphabetical, blue alphabetical, black alphabetical, red alphabetical. I already messed that up. <laughs> Do you know how long it took me to alphabetize those? Like, maybe 35 seconds. Alright, man. Well, <laughs> the only ones I took out were the Satyrs. <coughs> which. It seems, They're gonna be one of the more played cards yeah, today, anyway. Yeah, it seems like Xenagos is very popular down here, which is interesting. Wasn't expecting that. Yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of Xenagos the last couple rounds. First QR, though. This. This QR is probably gonna get there, it seems. I mean, Casey is just flooding out. He lost the. He, just can stabilize. That's what happened. That's the moral story. You don't play uh, Rebel Master, right? In my green red deck, I do not. I just play the dragons. All right. Do you side any at all? Nope. Darn. All right. This is for so we've had two matches with Rebel Master, one match without. <laughs> oh, excuse me. So. You can tell Casey looks to be a little frustrated. Uh, his body language changes and he pushes out a little bit. Uh, he's going to go to 11 here, 11 all. And nothing's going to happen. Ken's just going to keep acquiring a force to eventually just break through for lethal. I wouldn't have even Casey. added the Route Master to the board in case of another Perilous Vault. Yep. Guaranteed he doesn't have the lands to play it, but. <laughs> uh oh, a tormenting, tormenting voice! voice. Followed by a Magma Jet Shivan Reef. That was almost just the dream, I guess. I don't know what he was trying to get. I Cyclonic Rift? If it, is Tormenting Voice an instant? Wait, Cyclonic no. Rift is not a... Uh, Devastation Tide. That's the one I was thinking Devastation of. Devastation Tide. Yeah. Cyclonic Rift would be a better one, but... Couldn't even overload it. Neither of us... Are even in standard. Are even in standard. And Aether Spouts would get rid of all the tokens, but those Planeswalkers are a little good. By a little, I mean they're actually just they're actually just the, game. the reason that Ken won this game. I guess it's too soon to say he won, but I think this next turn he's attacking for it. game. It, yeah, Casey's gonna bottom balls to the chief engineer and the land, and that should be it. Well, it won't be. Uh, I think Casey has one more. He has Casey doesn't concede really. Like he always likes to just get a tag. He likes to play the entire game, and that's very respectable, especially when you're streaming. Like it's it's good to just. Even though it's over, like, play it out. Because uh, there's a lot of dead air time, and, you know, I talk to myself pretty much when it's dead air. So, I like it when they play it out. Yeah, there are times, most of the time I believe it is correct to play it out. Uh, there's always that Dave Snow point zero zero one percent chance. almost never concedes. Even if he knows that, it, that he lost, he still just goes for like that point point or point zero zero one percent chance that he just gets out of it. Yeah. And so it pays off for the people who do that because they always play it out. Eventually, if you play a thousand games or whatever, you know, you eventually hit that one game where it was good you played it out. Uh, yeah. and it also makes you better and better at magic too. The more you play, the better you play, the better you get. So missed yeah. trigger on the token, but that's okay because it's a casual F and M. Uh, it's gonna be a chief engineer thrown thrown as a chump in front of the Goblin Rabble Master. Eight's gonna get through, putting Casey to 11, or to 3 from 11. Three. <laughs> if there's any sort of burn spell here. Yeah, there are advantages and disadvantages to playing out. I think the main thing would be the clock and information in games 2 and 3, how you sideboard. Like I was talking yeah. about earlier, game 2 round one, I should have definitely conceded so I didn't show off the display of dominance. If, if, if Michael 
I feel like Michael should know that that get, gets brought in though. That's a that's a regular a fairly regular sideboard right thing, not right? Not really. Oh, really? It's not a very regular card. Not You know how often I I currently play standard, so yeah. I don't get to see decks all the time, but I when I read it, I was like, "Oh, cool. They released a card that I would hate to play against because I yeah. always play blue black." I was like, "Fantastic. You can still counter the like what would make display Dawn is very good is if it said spells you can, spells and permanents so that if they play is that is that a trumpet blast or a volcanic no, rush? That, what is that? That is a destroy every single one of his creatures and get six four four dragons. Wait, is that descent of dragons? Yes. Is that what that is? That is a descent of what? the dragons. Why did he do it? Did he do it? In, oh, in main phase two. Is it a? This is in main phase two. He hasn't typed his man. No, he plus Zenigos. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, he, that's cool. He actually that's cool. casts a spell for free. Um. Okay. Just upgrade your creatures. So <laughs> draw. Maelstrom Pulse. Anger of the Gods won't kill him. That's probably the main Ooh, it was an on-soul but... artifact. Uh, that was one they would have yeah. liked to have drawn a couple turns ago, but now that's not going to do it. And yeah, There's Ken Adams shake. gets it. Um, let me see how many table matches are left. But Ken Adams gets that one with his Teamer Planeswalker Super Friends deck. Teamer on... stuff. Teamer stuff. i call it that. Teamer stuff. He plays his Teamer stuff deck and gets there against Casey's Blue-Red Artifact deck. Yes, I was descended of the dragon. <laughs> I am the Illuminati, so just in case you didn't know, 360 no scopes are my middle name. They're uh, packing up, and uh, for some reason, Ken didn't use the goblin tokens. As you as you pointed out, there were countless goblin tokens. I made sure that there were like 20 goblin tokens in that stack, because Hordling Outburst, Rabble Master, Dragon Fodder, I'm sure that there's another one. Krinko Mob Boss, he's not in standard. Uh, there's plenty of things that make drag or, uh, goblin tokens right now, so I made sure that there were plenty of those. I think there's even some of those 4-4 four, four dragons for Descent of Dragons in the stack. I think I put a couple of those in, too. Uh, but yeah, that was an interesting card. I was not expecting to see Descent of Dragons today. Keegan the Authority of Magic. Uh, Keegan, actually, I don't know if you know, he came in here and commentated with me the entire first match. <laughs> it was just fun. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> He had a slight slip with language at the very beginning. And then he, like, it, I don't even know if they heard it. He, like, covered it up really well, but of course I heard it. Uh, but other than that, yeah, it was fun. Kenny hears all. I do hear all. I hear you guys talking about me next door, Ken Adams and Casey. All right, I'm going to leave you with Carter. I have to use the restroom. I will be right back. So, have fun, Carter. Uh, I'm going to leave my phone unlocked, so whenever my text updates, you can read those off, depending on what they are. You all right. Oh, look at that. He's actually sorting the tokens. What a nice guy. Alright, so... We got... So it's five rounds. That was round three. Two rounds to go. So I'm not sure what's going to make top eight. It's definitely going to cut to top eight. Probably going to play it out. My mastered box on the line. The salt is real. X and two has a chance of top aiding. I'm not sure. I haven't done the math. Let's see. Either way, I have to win out. And hey, if I lose again, you guys might be stuck with me for a while. dip my head in uh, the hometown to see Casey's reaction. He is livid. <laughs> he did not... It turns out he did not like uh, <laughs> Perilous vaulting away two planeswalkers and then immediately uh, getting the two played right back on and back to back. Uh, so, sorry Casey. Didn't mean for that to happen to you, buddy. But it happens to the best of us. Happens uh, to everybody. Next round is about to go up. 
Uh, All right. They were printing pairings out while I was over there. I don't know if you're playing anymore, but... Oh, I'm still in it. X2 might have a chance, so we'll Yeah, see. it's five rounds. There's a chance... Yeah,